Hey, welcome folks. Today we're going to continue our work with uh, integration. We're going to look at trigonometric integrals, and I'm going to call this video Trigon Trigonometric Integrals Part 1, because in this video we are going to focus on odd powers of sine and cosine. In the video titled Trigonometric Integrals Part 2, we will look at even powers of sine and cosine. To get us started, there are some important identities from trigonometry that will make our journey into trigonometric integrals doable. We start off by looking at or reviewing the Pythagorean identities. The first one, cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. The second one is 1 plus tangent squared x equals secant squared x. And the third one is 1 plus cotangent squared x equals cosecant squared x. Please be aware that in any of these Pythagorean identities, you can use a little bit of algebra and rewrite the identities. For example, cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. It could be rewritten as sine squared x equals 1 minus cosine squared x or it could be rewritten as cosine squared x equals 1 minus sine squared x. Likewise, you could uh, rewrite 1 plus tangent squared x equals secant squared x as tangent squared x equals secant squared x minus 1. Um, and you could do the, the same with the third identity as well. Continuing, let's take a quick look at what I call the power reducing identities. Um, you may know them as the half angle identities. They are one and the same. The first one is that a sine squared x can be rewritten as 1 minus cosine 2x all over 2. And I prefer to look at that as 1 half times the quantity 1 minus cosine 2x. The second power reducing identity is cosine squared x equals 1 plus cosine 2x all over 2 which I will rewrite that, or I consider it as 1 half times the quantity 1 plus cosine 2x. As you can see, I call them power reducing identities because it's taking a sine squared or a cosine squared, and we are rewriting it with a trig function that has a power of 1. We're reducing the power, hence power reducing identities. To get us started here, and uh, how we're going to attack uh, the, the integrals we will see here in video one, uh, I'm going to offer up the following guidelines. The first guideline is that if the power of sine is odd and positive, we're going to save one of the sine factors and convert the remaining factors to cosine. Uh, we will, what we'll be able to do, how we'll be able to convert those remaining factors to cosine is by making use of the Pythagorean identity cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. In guideline 2, it's like if the power of cosine is odd and positive, we're going to save one cosine factor and we're going to convert the remaining factors to sine. Again, that will be done by making use of the Pythagorean identity cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. In the uh, trig integrals part two video, uh, I will look at a third guideline, and that's going to tell us what to do when we have even powers of sine and cosine. But for right now, we're only going to focus on odd powers of sine and cosine. So here we are. Let's look at a quick example of how to, to um, put these guidelines into use. So let's say we're asked to determine the integral sine to the fifth x cosine squared x dx. Um, now I should warn you that this example is going to take a couple of slides to do. Uh, so if, if you would like, feel free to pause this video right now and write down this integral uh, so that you could follow along. All right, continuing. I begin by rewriting the uh, integral sine to the fifth x cosine squared x dx as the integral sine to the fourth x cosine squared x sine x dx. Right here, that's that uh, factor of sine 
that in the guidelines we said we're going to save one of the factors of sign. That's the factor of sign that I am saving by uh, looking at the uh, uh, sine to the fifth, the sine to the fourth times sine x. You will see here in a couple of steps why the guideline is as it is, why we are saving this factor of sine. Continuing, nothing uh, earth shattering in this step. Uh, sine to the fourth x can be rewritten as a sine squared x raised to the second power. That's all we did there. Um, the next step is making use of the Pythagorean identity cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. I am looking at the sine squared x and I'm just rewriting it as 1 minus cosine squared x. So that now leads us to consider the next step, which is a calculus, um, old calculus step by now, u substitution. If we let u equal cosine x, then we know du is a negative sine x dx, or negative du is sine x dx. So starting to see what's going to happen when we do our u substitution. Notice u is cosine x, so right here we'd have a 1 minus u squared, and then that quantity will be squared. Here's another cosine x, so that would be a u squared. And now you see why we saved a sine x as a factor way up here in our first step. Because this sine x, that factor, sine x that we saved, the sine x dx is going to be negative du. So making those substitutions and continuing with this example, we have the integral 1 minus u squared, quantity squared, u squared, negative du. And if we go ahead and rip that uh, negative 1 out front of the integral sign, and we go ahead and uh, uh, at the same time expand this 1 minus u squared to the second power, we get uh, the opposite of the integral, uh, quantity 1 minus 2u squared plus u to the fourth, u squared du. Uh, any guesses what we'd do next? That's right, we're going to distribute that u squared. So we are left with integrating just a u squared minus 2u to the fourth plus u to the sixth du. Uh, pretty easy integral to attack now with our power rule for integration. And using the power rule of integration, we get an antiderivative of the opposite of one-third u cubed minus two-fifths u to the fifth plus one-seventh u to the seventh plus c. And final step, I'm going to distribute the negative one, resubstitute cosine for u, and we get the antiderivative of negative one-third cosine cubed x plus two-fifths cosine to the fifth x minus one-seventh cosine to the seventh x plus c. So to quickly recap, we started off with the, the integral sine to the fifth x cosine squared x dx. We rewrote it as sine to the fourth x cosine squared x sine x. We saved that factor of sine so that when uh, we took advantage of the Pythagorean identity, uh, 1 minus cosine squared x is equal to sine squared x. Uh, we ended up with, with the integral 1 minus cosine squared x quantity squared cosine squared x sine x. Then when we did our u substitution, we let u equal cosine x. Um, negative du was the sine x dx. So we had that integral, which using a little bit of algebra, um, expanding and then distributing, uh, we were left with a very friendly uh, integration problem that using the power rule of integration and then resubstituting knocked the problem out. Uh, so that's a condensed version of uh, all the steps that we did. I hope this video helped. Uh, I hope you start to uh, see trigonometric integrals are not that bad to attack. 
and uh, thanks for watching.